uh, second lecture by Dr. Manzoor Ahmed Bhatt. First of all, uh, let me just give a brief introduction of Dr. Manzoor Ahmed Bhatt. Originally, uh, sir is from Natipura Srinagar. Uh, sir is third BFSC from GNK, BFSC gold medalist in 1990, MFSC gold medalist in 1992, both from Mangalore College of Fisheries, Karnataka. Uh, Sir is one of the initial breed actually uh, from the professional fisheries person to work in large private sector aquaculture pro projects in the country and Sir is the part of the team to set up 100 uh, hectares of shrimp farm and 100 million seed capacity shrimp hatchery in Nellore, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, he has done international trainings in shrimp farm project planning, construction management at CV Thailand, one of the pioneers in large scale industry shrimp farming in Asia. He is the CEO of BFPA Goa, perhaps one of the first and only non-governmental uh, CEO. Otherwise, uh, BFDA CEOs are officers deputed from the fishery department. So, uh, sir is in that case uh, the only one. Project director of government shrimp hatchery in Goa. The entrepreneur journey started in 1998. Uh, he has set up an aquaculture consultancy entity, designed and commissioned many eco farms in Goa, Maharashtra and Karnataka, also made a few project proposal in Kashmir Valley, uh, commissioned many aquaculture projects in Goa. Their first uh, turnkey project was 1,200,000 uh, canals, farms set up in 1999 uh, with an uh, ETA grid treatment area. Uh, National Institute of Oceanography uh, did the EIA. Uh, study for this project. The biggest farm designed was uh, 8.2 lakh square kilometers, 1620 canal. Exposure come training program in high density and cage uh, culture in Vietnam. Sir has owned this. Currently a visiting faculty at Goa University for many years now. Uh, teach coastal aquaculture to uh, gross wealth graduate students. Besides fisheries, Sir has diversified into uh, food processing sector, owning a private limited company. Uh, to formulate and manufacture over 100 dry and wet food products, both uh, on label and private labels as well. So that was a brief introduction for uh, Dr. Manzoor Ahmed Bhatt, sir. Uh, today, sir will be delivering uh, cold storage and uh, fish preservation techniques. Over to you, sir. Over 30 years, uh, can you start? Okay, everyone. Can I have a small brief about the participants? background yeah, in college outside. So, very difficult for me to get to Kashmiri like, no, quite, like, as a talk. So just excuse me. Uh, uh, so you can uh, request me and uh, I'll just try to explain. Um, so today's topic, let's say I would be talking about uh, trout as such uh, because uh, there will be experts. I have not had much of uh, interaction with trout but for visiting Kukarnag and other government farms because my seniors uh, were in the department. So I had the privilege uh, to visit those farms in the hatcheries. So that's all the interaction I've had with the trout. Yes, of course, uh, eating as well. But as far as culture, uh, physically being part of it, I have no experience in that. Uh, so I'll just uh, talk about uh, maybe entrepreneurial journey and the productivity like what's happening uh, in agriculture sector uh, in the rest of uh, the country or uh, around the world. So I had the privilege to go abroad and uh, learn uh, different uh, activities of agriculture. So that's what I'll try to do. I'll just try to uh, share my bit of experience, what I've learned over this uh, period of years. So if you can see my, uh, like, you know, the first slide, so this is what I would want to see in future in Kashmir. Uh, and I've particularly not taken men in this because, see, uh, in aquaculture industry, I have seen ladies doing much better than men, even though know, I am uh, myself from that line, but then I've seen uh, ladies doing much better as aqua entrepreneurs. Uh, so that's what I would want to see in future, many more entrepreneurs. I was very impressed with a girl, I think Rubiya or something, the one on the right bottom. Uh, I saw her, there is no video of her success story. So others I have just read about what was in this. 
the uh, next place. So you know, let's say uh, when I started my career, 1990s, that was the time when aquaculture industry just uh, blew up. Uh, Andhra, as you know, let's know that the center of aquaculture activities or uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, on the first day, uh, the 25th, my wife also spoke about that. You know, we started our careers together in Andhra. Uh, so, from then and today, if I see aquaculture, it is totally like you no know, 180 degrees uh, different. So, there is nothing of what we did or what we learned in the 90s and what we do today. There is nothing, no match. But for the basics, like our earlier speaker, the uh, doctor about luminology, except for the water parameters, Otherwise, you see the agriculture activity, the uh, technologies, totally like no, they are poles apart. There is nothing to, like no, what I did in 90s and what we do today. So they are totally apart. <coughs> so that's what I thought. I'll just give a brief about uh, like no, what are the new technologies that are coming in rather than just doing the typical traditional way of uh, farming. So when we go into like no, today's time uh, for agriculture like no, activities or business as an entrepreneur. It's not like how 90s, as I said, like you know, it was a time uh, in sugar industry wherein you put in 100 rupees in your farm and at, at the end of four, four and a half months you get 300, 400 rupees in turn. That was the uh, like, you know, earnings in aqua at that time. And uh, if you happen to go to uh, Waisa, if you go to Nellore, Dimavaram, those areas, if you go, there, wherever your eyesight can reach, you will see only farms, there is nothing else. Horizon, wherever you can uh, like, you know, stand in any part of those areas, you turn around, you will see only the farm. So that is the amount of development that happened in the 90s in uh, aqua industry. So all those like, you know, the efficiencies or the technical know-how wasn't that important at all. So that's what I'm just trying to get to those aspects. Like, you know, if someone is wanting to enter into this activity, so there are something like, you know, because there is everything available now, unlike our times, uh, everything is available, you know, information is available just on the uh, click of a button. So that's what I thought I'll just speak on those aspects. Let's say uh, I would want to talk about productivity. See, when we started culture, if someone could uh, achieve uh, around 1 to 2 tons per hectare, it used to be new in Andhra. But see, today, you know, people take 20 tons, 30 tons. So see, the 10 times, so that's what is productivity, is what is important. So how we can produce more in a limited area? Okay, so efficiency. That's what like you know, utilizing the best possible like you know, resources in a limited area to uh, produce more. So cost uh, cost benefit is in the seeds. Now if you go uh, like you know, someone wants to get into entrepreneurship, land is what what will be the most costliest uh, capital uh, part of the like you know, project. So that's how we have to then like you know. Uh, get to the people who know about all this line rather than just wanting to get because we now because of this PMO scheme a lot of uh, people are getting it because there is a subsidy component not really that they are interested but they are just interested in like you know, I have seen so many projects because in NFVB my juniors only are the like, you know, bosses so I know projects are getting sanctions they are just in the paper and people just want uh, subsidy they have political connection so that's what is happening that's a negative part of it so that's what when you get into that uh, like no project, so you have to look at uh, cost benefit analysis. That means in case I'm putting in say 100 rupees, what I'll get after that. So that's what like no one has to learn all those aspects. Uh, that's what I'm coming to. Like everything is available on the like no touch of our buttons today. So you can just move to that and just learn how to do all this, how to understand all this uh, simple uh, like no phenomena. Product quality, like uh, if I just talk about uh, shrimp exports to the US, uh, see almost every year 30% plus rejects happen from the US market because quality is not there. Or if at all you have reduced very good uh, shrimp or any, any product for that matter, aquatic uh, product, there are instances of antibiotic residues, there are instances of BDs, hair in the product and more of the container because in, when you send a particular container the US uh, FDA they'll just at the port they'll just uh, take out one two containers I mean one two uh, boxes from the random boxes and they'll just uh, check the quality and if your 
bad luck, you get, uh, then they just get any of the hair or the BD or any uh, external uh, substrate in the product or antibiotic residue. Whole of the shipment, it's not just those one container, whole of the shipment gets rejected and it, I'm talking of crores of rupees per container. So it should be, you know, the value at 40 times of a container. Even I remember our time, we did one export in around 92 to UK and uh, we had hair fall, you know, imprints in the US, uh, sorry, in UK. And luckily that time the rules were not so tough. So we sent one of our uh, you know, colleagues, he went to UK for a month and we took it to an Indian uh, you know, person there, known person and we reprocessed that. And then we would develop the luck here, but then that's how you, know, so you find it at the end of the day, entrepreneur wants to look at the business and the money at the end of the day. So again, when you set up a project, you have to see the sustainability of the project, you know, how sustainable it is. It's not something like no short term you do like a something small you want to do and just okay, nahi chala to okay, come out. I was just reading morning the story of a entrepreneur. He has 34 years experience uh, because of shrimp industry. And now because of the uh, low prices and uh, disease factory, you know, in Karnataka, right, there is uh, microsporidian disease found now in the water, which goes up in the water. So it's going to be very tough in that uh, part of the, uh, like, no, India. So he was thinking of quitting. So like, that's all, like, you get a situation where you, know, you have to see the sustainability of the project. And uh, all, for all this, like, now when you go into this aquaculture uh, today's time, biosecurity is very important. Biosecurity is simply like uh, how you are securing your project, which you have pond or two pond. Or uh, yeah, let's say trout due to the race race. So you have to enclose it, you have to secure it so that there is least amount of external interference in your culture system. Nothing external, like even birds can uh, drop, you know, that's what, how we have learned for a period of years in uh, film culture. So birds will pick up a dead crop uh, from one of the farms, and if you are open, your farm is open, and it, it can just drop off, like it can slip off its uh, like, no claws and get into a farm and you are finished. So biosecurity in today's time is paramount. You know, so anyone who's putting a project, so it has to be part of the project, uh, like, you know, capital cost. So you have to invest in biosecurity. Maybe green netting on the sides, on the top, so that you are securing from any unwanted uh, external uh, interference. Next, please. I just thought I'll just uh, use this one slide. I put that bit. <laughs> Uh, like, are, like, no, there are so many NGOs, uh, not just in India, all over the world, like, no, who are uh, spreading these myths, like, no. So I thought I'll just give a brief, uske bhi. So back for environment. So, but if you see now, see today's technology, most sustainable uh, activity it is, and most efficient in terms of conversion of protein, conversion of nitrogen. If you take uh, poultry, if you take uh, beef, if you take pork, any of this farming, if you take the conversion, is the best in fish farming. So it is no more to like no. It's not, not at all like no. How uh, the NGOs used to say that it is bad for the environment, leaving so much polluted water in the system. So it is among all the farming, animal farming, it is the best in terms of conversions. Again, use more fish than it uh, it produces. So you know, as a for a farm, when you grow fish, you have to use feed uh, and. Part of the like the feed is the fish meal, which comes from the oceans. Um, so that's what like no again the myth is that we use more of uh, like no sea fish as a part of like no nutrition to uh, uh, feed, which is then used to grow fish. But again, that's not uh, true. Uh, of late, you see, so I've been uh, has been like no, for many years uh, as a part of the as an ingredient for the fish feed and. Uh, U.S. soya, if you, like anyone knows about U.S. soya, see, like, you know, how the industry is working in U.S. about uh, soya. Uh, the farmers, they have a association, they have a group, uh, wherein part of the earnings of the, from the uh, farming of uh, uh, soya bean, that is used to promote their soya bean all over the world. In fact, uh, the 
Muzaffar Bazaar, the first BFSC, uh, who is now retired from the department. His classmate, he is Asia head for US Dr. Vijay Anand, uh, his brother's classmate. So he's heading that uh, company, uh, Asia Duty. He operates from Hyderabad. So that's what, so they have been trying to promote soya ev uh, everywhere, but then Indian government is not permitting so US soya to come into India. So they want to help uh, Indian farmers first. Uh, but he, uh, US is now in uh, Bangladesh, it's in Nepal, it's in Pakistan, uh, it's in all uh, Southeast Asia. But India still, uh, we are a bit hesitant uh, to allow uh, US soya. Again, another myth is uh, use of pigments uh, in the feed to enhance the color of the final uh, product from the farms. But see, like you now, how in nature you have carotenoids, uh, like you now, what the fish gets nutrient uh, and the pigment from the natural foods. So similar thing, we also add on uh, in the feeds uh, uh, the carotenoids and uh, or uh, this thing estrogenins, which are like you know, which are similar like what is in nature. So it's a good thing like you now uh, towards the last part of the culture. Let's like, say if you talk of shrimp in particular, they use um, uh, this estrogenins in the end so that you get that orange color in the shrimp because that basically more. It's almost another half a dollar more than the normal uh, like you know, which is. Uh, greenish grey color. So that, that's what. So again, it's not that like no synthetic colors are added. So it are, these are permanent colors what is permanent by And again, uh, antibiotic use in uh, fish. So yes, if you see pan India, uh, so there is a lot of antibiotic usage. Uh, problem is same because most of the farmers when uh, they entered, so they are not from the you know, fisheries background, so they won't know. So whatever some technical advisor would uh, suggest them, so they will do that, use that antibiotics. Again, those days they won't know. So whatever is like, you know, given to them, see, farmer in that, that situation is like, you know, he is at a, against a wall, so he doesn't know. So only the artist to whatever he karo, wo karo, puja karo, ye karo. So he will do everything because he wants to like, you know, salvage his crop. So that's what there has been a rapid use of antibiotics, but because of the rejection was late uh, when we export them, so you know, people have also learned that these are not permitted and we cannot. Anyway, if you have to use antibiotics, there is a time, uh, like you know, we normally avoid uh, uh, putting antibiotics for the last month of the crop. So that there is enough of time for flushing of this antibiotics from the system and also depuration, like you know, if at all there is any unwanted uh, smells and all that, so we allow. Uh, that to happen. Next, please. So these are the new age uh, aquaculture systems. Uh, what is like you know, getting popular and which are like you know, more efficient and like you know, where the least of the resources you use, whether it is the land usage uh, or the physical uh, amenity, what you need in a farm. So these are some other systems which are like you no. Know, uh, like the new age systems which uh, people are adopting to and uh, we would see aquaponics uh, anyone has already uh, like you know in aquaculture or fisheries got which idea besides the uh, students entrepreneur line may anyone who has been doing fish ke mein anyone nothing okay see aquaponics or uh, fish mein ke, farming mein what we do is uh, when we grow fish Water, like you now we feed the uh, animals. So almost, if you put 100 kgs of feed, only around 30 uh, kgs is used up. Rest, uh, 65, 70 uh, kgs just goes waste. Okay. So that enriches your water. See, for uh, from a biological point of view, it's an enrichment of water. But from environment point of view, it's a pollution. Okay, because you are adding excess of nutrients to the water. So that when we release in the natural water bodies, uh, it can uh, become like you know, it can create eutrophication uh, situation wherein the native species, their like you no know, algal species or animals, it may just enhance their productions and maybe then it can uh, lead to uh, algal removal crashes and all. So aquaponics is a system wherein the same water from the fish tank you release and then you use that water for growing. Uh, uh, vegetables, okay, leafy vegetables in particular we do. So that what happens most of the nutrients, uh, nut nitrogen nutrients, because see feed is made up of nitrogen, protein. So that becomes a nutrient for the plants, those leafy vegetables to grow. 
and uh, in terms of water is rendered uh, uh, like no uh, less with the lesser pollutants and again that water is used up in the culture tank to culture the fish so that is brief of aquaponics rs so that is typically like now what trout culture uses so that's a by default like now rs system for what uh, trout uh, culture is so here in what we do is i'll be giving a little uh, details uh, later so in rs what we do is uh, the water from the culture tanks or rs uh, this raised waste it is filtered so there are two ways of filtration one is mechanical filter and also biological filter so with the, these two processes then uh, water is cleaned and then put back in the culture tanks and uh, third system is uh, bioflock system uh, wherein what we do is within the culture tank itself whether it is formed or it is in the tank uh, culture circular tanks what now it's popular uh, like you know efficient uh, systems um, so we grow the beneficial bacteria to overcome the uh, like you know negative bacteria so that way let like, you know all the uh, and all whatever uh, like you know nitrogen and uh, this carbon is there so we make it a optimum uh, like you know level by adding external uh, source of carbon and uh, so we convert the waste whatever is generated by excess feed so that nitrogen is utilized to convert into uh, good form which is again becomes a uh, as a feed for the fish or the shrimp what you are growing in the tank so that's what is bioflock in brief new system is now coming up uh, like you know, it's called in pond race ways so like you now if you see uh, in um, east coast in particular andhra there are still farms which are huge like you know, 30 acres 40 acres very huge the like, whole of this village like you know, size ponds are there so now this in pond race way as the like you know, name suggests so within the pond you make a race way so you have a huge large pond so this is a like you know tank you make uh, there race way so water just you know, it's enclosed so water is just allowed from one end and just it goes from the other end so some sort of a race way it is and so what happens so you don't have to worry about the water quality because it just gets diluted to hold up the big pond so you are just culturing only in this and the, all the waste water goes in the hole of this pond so you don't worry in that so that is what is rs system uh, sorry uh, this uh, idrs system. system next please <coughs> so uh, when we come to aquaculture so the biggest cost factor in aquaculture is uh, feed and land and anyway that you know, that's that's everywhere you know now uh, see i was in goa i've been in goa for almost now 30 years uh, the coastal land where uh, like you could do shrimp farming or fish farming that has more value if it goes into tourism right goa you know it's a tourist place so slowly like you no know, most of the sh uh, shrimp farms which uh, got set up in like you know, early uh, early uh, say around 2000 2005 they are just converting because there is more value in tourism than in uh, aquaculture and even somebody wants to set up uh, you no know, farm so you know like it's too costly to buy land to set up a farm but of course as i told you this new systems of areas uh, bioflock systems Uh, they have <coughs> come by like no uh, compact uh, systems so land is not of a concern anymore but what is of uh, like no importance is the feed so feed cost is very high when we go into aquaculture so almost uh, any running operation almost 60 70% of your running operation is the feed because you know feed is again like no protein so protein has money so every feed you use the value or the cost of the feed depends on the how much of percentage of protein it has so that's how the idea is to and nowadays the idea is to produce uh, similar uh, quantities of fish or the shrimp in a limited area so that's what where in this new systems of rs bioflock system coming uh, so uh, yeah next please so here i have just tried to give you the feed conversion efficiencies you can see like there is fish uh, and the shrimp and there is poultry there is pigri there is sheep and there is uh, this uh, meat industry uh, so you can see in that like no fish almost all the varieties of uh, fish the conversion now what is this conversion that means if i am putting 1 kg of uh, feed in my pond so how many at the end of my culture how many kgs of shrimp or fish i am uh, taking out So you can see in everywhere, like no, see catfishes. You take or anything, you take shrimp. 
So it is between 0.9 and 1.15. Uh, that's the range. That means for every kg of uh, 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 this uh, meat, what I get at the end of the culture. So almost if you take the last, uh, you know, the green fish. So that is one and a half kg of feed I am using in that. Okay. But if you go to the lower part, you can see poultry, it's almost 1.4 to 1.8 kg of feed you need to get 1 kg of uh, chicken. Likewise in uh, degree, you need 2.6 to 4.4. And uh, likewise sheep and uh, you know, the beef, 4 to 8. So efficiency, that means you are using less amount of nitrogen, less amount of uh, feed to convert to get the flesh uh, component uh, in uh, aquaculture. Next. So, if I now give a little brief about these two systems, the RF and Bioflop. See, uh, let's talk about the RS first. So, initial cost is very high. So, the setup cost, the capital cost of RS is very high because the filter systems are very costly uh, compared to, like, if you talk of uh, Bioflop, it's much, let's say, half the cost of a Bioflop system and you set up for a similar tonnage, like, now, at the end of the culture, if you want, like, say, 10 tons of some produce you want. So, to set it up, if RS will cost you say 1 lakh, by will cost only 50, 60,000. So that's the uh, initial cost. So RS is very costly to set up initially. So anyone who has good amount of money, so he can go for RS. But uh, so it is more stable than Bioflock. Okay, unless Bioflock you get well trained, it is a it's a mess. Bioflock is a mess unless you are technically good and you have done some you know, internship with someone already running. Bioflock can just end, your, end up in a uh, disaster if you are not you know, very careful with uh, the system. Because what happens is the flock when it uh, forms, uh, uh, if you are not taking proper care in case your electricity goes for half, even half an hour, 20 minutes, because you have very high stock, so all your flock can just collapse and within no time you have all the shrimp and fish will die. So you have to be very technically good or experienced like now. Maybe one cycle of culture you have to do in terms with someone. Unlike uh, RS, because RS basically filtration system, so it's just machine system which will uh, do the, uh, the clean part of the water. So that is one plus point of RS, even though initial capital cost is high, but uh, operational wise, this is more easy. RS is more easier than Bioflock. And uh, so, Bioflock advantages, like uh, whatever waste. It's generated in terms of the fecal matter or the waste uh, feed that can be converted into useful form. And again, uh, I have seen the I have seen some projects where even up to 20, 30 percent of feed uh, is utilized from the flock. So it can reduce your overall requirement of feed. Um, there is one farm uh, last I visited in Kundapur, that's in uh, like the coastal Karnataka, from almost. 180 to 200 kilometers. In Shrupam, he got with Bioflock system 0.8 FCR. So, because he could utilize the flock as a, because he, uh, he has a lot of experience, uh, he must be having I think, more than 25, 26 years of experience abroad as well as India. He was working abroad uh, in Africa for uh, 12, 13 years, then he set up his own farm. So that's why I'm uh, coming to like you know, experience. Bioflop needs experience and uh, full-time presence of the person at the project site. Next, please. Aquaponics. I just explained to you what happens in aquaponics. So whatever waste is uh, like you know, generated, that is channelized into a system wherein uh, like you know, uh, you put some cash crops of plants, leafy plants, so that nutrients. Uh, what is waste from the pond? is a nutrient for the uh, growing uh, leafy vegetables. So that was basically the concept of uh, aquapon uh, aquaponics. And once those uh, uh, nitrogen waste is accumulated by uh, these plants, so water becomes cleaner, so that goes back in the uh, fish culture tank to be used. So in this aquaponics uh, also what we do is, uh, like, you know, main areas, uh, purpose is same that we have to utilize the least amount of resources, least amount of uh, physical land to grow similar uh, amount of quantities of fish. Next one. So I just given here like now brief uh, in case I thought like now there may be many um, first time entrepreneurs. So what are the different types of cultures we do? 
So I've just given here, like, you know, what are the like the font sizes and the, what are the productivities. So traditional culture when we uh, do, so there are very large fonts. As I told you, like Andhra, if you go, or even Tamil Nadu, you'll see huge fonts, like, you know, half of these village fonts, like, you know, that's the size of uh, fonts they, they do fish culture, like, you know, mainly the cutler or they do there. And productivity, if you see, so 30 to 40 grams per meter square. So you can imagine, like, you know, that is the amount of fish what is produced, so 30 to 40 grams in one meter area. Then comes the extensive uh, culture. Again, there are large ponds, maybe around uh, uh, two hectares, three hectare ponds, extensive cultures we do. And uh, again, productive, you see, it is almost uh, 80 to 100 grams per meter square. So, next is intensive cultures. Again, it is like no, anything about uh, from half a, like, no, half an hectare to one hectare pond size. And productive, you see, it is almost half a kg per meter square we produce. Super intensive systems. Uh, that is again like no in the ponds when you now do thousand square meter ponds so that's what we are because you are uh, reducing the areas and doing high uh, like uh, stockings so you are able to produce more almost two to five kgs per meter square so you can see the difference between different culture systems <coughs> from 30 40 grams to almost uh, two to five kgs and RS by far, as I told you they are the system what are super intensive systems next one please so here you can just uh, see the comparison between uh, different uh, like you no know, culture uh, this practices and what uh, like you no know, uh, our parameters are. So if you see the production between a traditional and a new culture system, <coughs> in production uh, in traditional is low and the new culture system is very high. As you saw in the previous slide, intensive culture is low in traditional and new culture is very high. Stocking density again low and uh, very high in uh, intensive systems. Water management, you don't need to worry about uh, like no water quality in uh, traditional systems, but in uh, new age systems, uh, it's very strict. And you, every day you have to monitor, morning and uh, evening you have to monitor the water. In fact, I'm now, these days, part of a project uh, in South. So where it is totally remote, like you, know, you can say, office is in Srinagar and farm is in yeah, Bangalore. So everything, all the uh, sensors are in the pond. They are by Wi-Fi connected to office. So he's just monitoring. He can release the water in case he feels that to some parameter of a particular tank is low. So sitting in Srinagar, he can just operate a pump of the particular tank, release the you know, bad water and fill in the new water. So that's what a lot of uh, technology has come in. Feed management, uh, natural or simple feeds we use in traditional, while as in uh, new cultures we use complex and formulated feeds. Formulated feeds, when we talk about that means it has to have a certain amount of protein, it has to have a certain amount of fat, uh, and then uh, micronutrients. And uh, technology usage, very limited in traditional, you know, we, any, anybody can do that uh, traditional uh, you know, culture as long as it's a huge uh, parcel of land, you can just uh, do te uh, traditional technology. But in uh, this new cultures, technology input is very high. So you have to be technically very sound to take care of these new projects, new uh, uh, culture practices. Next one. Yeah, next. So here I thought uh, just give one slide about business fundamentals. Uh, see, this I did because uh, my family experience, I have a cousin. Um, he worked in Delhi for almost 10 15 years in IT. Uh, maybe you are Faisal, you might know him. Uh, Faisal Sophie. Yeah. So, what he did, he has just put up a garment shop in an area where you know it, there is a market for that type of a business. So, it's not just like you, know, you want to do a business or so just set it up anywhere, any which way because you just want to get into business. It doesn't work. See, there is something, so certain fundamentals one has to do before you get into any type of business, whether it is aquaculture or any, any type of business. In scientific terms, you call it SWOT analysis. If your master's PhD fellows, they will be aware of that. So, I won't go into that detail, but here I thought I'll just give a brief, like, no, business fundamentals when someone wants to get into uh, business as an entrepreneur. Now, here I'll talk about uh, pig farming or uh, mushroom farming. So, first is farm size. 
So you have to understand like you know, based on your ability or your finances, so how big project you want to set up. Okay, so that uh, that is like you know, the farm size one has to know. So again, when you get into now uh, any uh, this aquaculture activity, so you have to have some basic knowledge to get into it. So there is no point to the traditional way and like, you know, doing culture because see, at the end of the day you are doing a business to earn some money. So in traditional it, there is money. It is okay you can sustain that uh, money, but if you want to have a good uh, you know um, economic returns, so that's where you have a basic knowledge. Like course like this, uh, you know, when you attend, some like you no, know, you never know who's like you no know, uh, mind to be like okay I want to do this. I will learn something here. Again, I do example of another of my cousin. Uh, she wanted to become a doctor. Okay, maybe my she is five, six, or maybe eight years junior to me from Bihar, Chadora. Uh, she didn't uh, do she like whatever entrance was that for medicine. She couldn't qualify. Then she was doing BSc, uh, normal BSc, uh, women's college, and agriculture department that time did a like this training program. And it was about uh, floriculture and horticulture. She attended. I don't know how many of you know United Floritech. It's one of the leading uh, floriculture units in the valley. Urbina, uh, Shilpa Kazan, and she's the largest, uh, you know, uh, farm uh, horticulturist and uh, floriculturist in, from Kashmir Valley. And uh, last month, she was even <coughs> awarded by Union Ministry. So, advantages take advantage of this uh, programs like this because you never know what you click. So she attended that, it was four days program and she just decided, no, this is what I want to do. And then she attended more, so like, you know, this uh, seminars or whatever they were conducting. She went to agriculture university, met uh, this faculty there, ate their brains, now I want to do this, so please help me with this, what I should do. So she started small with uh, uh, this roses, then now uh -huh. name it, she has it. And she has also now put up, um, distillation unit to process to extract oils from the you know, glass. So that's what no anyone has the interest to get into entrepreneurship. So attend whatever programs come, see you never know what will be of uh, clicking in your mind, okay, this is what like you know this is good, this I want to do. So in fact I have uh, told uh, Dean here also like you know when you have seminars like this, even let the students attend. See they are tomorrow's like you no, know, they are the future. Okay, even the non-students, you never know who will be like a keen to do. Okay, so knowledge that's what comes to the knowledge. So knowledge you have to have some basic knowledge about when you start and uh, want to do some business. So you have to have basic knowledge about uh, that uh, industry. Because of not this PMOS scheme, so there is so much of activity happening all of India. Okay, twenty-five thousand crores in five years is not a small amount. Um, See recently one project, in fact I don't know how many of you know there is Hyderabad also there is one trout project in 48 degree temperature he is doing uh, trout farming. Okay so because of this look, government intervention so there is subsidy component there is 40% normal subsidy and if it is uh, woman entrepreneur there is 20 plus 20% 20 more so 60% subsidy for women entrepreneurs. So you have to have the basic like, you know, knowledge, what is the government uh, support, what is the government aid when we go into this activity. So there is a lot of uh, financial support uh, coming from the government side. And I guess Kashmir being UT, so I guess it is, I don't know, 90%? Then I think it will be in the uh, North East States, it is 90% of uh, the subsidy component. Of course it is for a medium uh, projects, but if it is we talk of large projects, yeah, that's a cap, you cannot go beyond a certain limit, I think that's a cap of purchase uh, as an entrepreneur, I think once year, max you can go. And next is again information, so you have to have information like now again because as I said today's time is like no digital world, so whatever you want to do, like say you have some pH problems, so you can just google and see what is like now this pH, how to take care of it, what I can do immediately till some, I get some technical assistance. So that's also you have to be uh, like no uh, ready with information. Everyone is like no mobile today, like no digital technology. So you have to be uh, like no ready to know what is happening my phone and what to take care. That is the basic level at your end. 
then again uh, coming to the science part of it so when uh, you are growing fish or you are growing shrimp or you are doing uh, weed or you are seaweeds or you are doing uh, clams, pearls so you have to learn on your own like to keep uh, like you know, updating your information what is happening with us so what is the science what is happening elsewhere in the world about this particular uh, business activity or the culture i am doing so you have to keep uh, like you know, updating your knowledge uh, regularly and next is uh, tech and uh, iot things so as i told you just now that uh, what a farm coming up in andhra so so that's what the level of uh, technology is happening uh, in uh, europe in the west even um, cage farms in like you know off uh, seas like uh, I happened to go to Vietnam to learn about cage farming in the open seas. So remote like you now see in one cage I saw during the storm they can close the hole of the cage and sink it five meters below the water level. So that is a like amount of technology what one can do with today's like you know uh, tech. IoT of things you can do. So it can just submerge on its own just by like you no know, press of a button from remote uh, land location. Cage can see five meters. So even if there is storm, so it will be you know rough. This will be only on the top, not in the underwater. Again, when the like you no know, uh, the storm goes, so you can just uh, uh, raise it up. And again, uh, this is like you no know, my personal experience like you no know, diversification. So always don't depend on only on one particular species if you are getting the culture, don't only do one species. Of course, see, we have limited species in culture, um, limited species of fish in culture, in the field. Uh, possible, if it is possible, so try to do different varieties because, see, even if, uh, like say, in the shrimp industry, if you see now in India, first it was gone down, okay, by 95, uh, 95, 96, Monodon just turned out of picture and then 4-5 years there was lull, then by 2000 we got this American uh, Venami. Okay, even now it's come, it comes from, uh, you know, the root stock comes from US. Um, so that's what looks so depending on one particular species it can, it can always be uh, like, not danger as far as the business is concerned. So always have now, if you see in uh, south like you know, Andhra or east west coast anywhere, so they will do uh, like no fish, they will do clams in the same pond, uh, the drain they will do uh, like no shellfish, they will do algae in the so they make multiple channels. And uh, value addition, okay, value addition is something one always has to see, there is no point selling just raw, okay. Again as I like no, uh, see like no, even I do uh, fish, uh, like no, I am into that line, fisheries line. But then I have diversified myself. I do uh, food processing. I do uh, uh, cosmetics. So this was a blessing when COVID came, right? So because I had multiple channels of business, so I didn't suffer much. So that's what it's my personal experience. Always do value addition. Firstly, uh, when you do uh, like you know normal uh, fish you want to sell, they will come eventually because see like you know, there is much of production in the valley, so. You won't have option of doing value addition, but then with uh, I think uh, Sophie, Dr. Sophie, he's I think into that uh, post harvest. Uh, so maybe there are again some you, know, you will be having a value addition dividend uh, as well. So you have to learn how to value it because, like say, <laughs> see in shrimp industry, if you see, or in fish also, clearly uh, if you see, it is just what X farm price is around 60, 65 rupees. But now farmers do in Africa if you go, they do fillets. So same thing, you are, they are able to sell three dollars. So that's where is money in value addition, not in the normal thing. Okay. Um, so that's what uh, I was uh, wanting to say. Uh, like, not try to learn about value addition. How you can just add some value to your produce. Next, please. Okay. This. Uh, I wouldn't want to get into this too much of a technical Next. Can I have water, please? Someone here, yeah, I want water. Okay. Uh, so, I think the early lecture also, you had a small thing about the water characters. I don't want to go into that. Next one, please. So here I just give a brief about uh, RA system. This will be any craft farmer wants to do. So this is how basically the concept will be. So here what is done is water is passed through uh, a series of filters. 
so there are physical filters and there are biological filters wherein water is cleaned and then returned back to the culture tank. Okay, and uh, so in this way, what happens is there is you are uh, the bioscurity which I talked initially. So that's where is important here. So you are not depending on the external water throughout your culture because you are reusing the same water what you started with. Maybe only you have to take care of in case there are leakages in your tanks or in your system or there is like no evaporation anyway, that's not uh, like no relevant for uh, temperate areas like ours. But if you talk of like say South India and all that, you have every day almost 3 to 5 percent of your operation loss because of the heat. Okay, so you depend very little uh, dependencies on the new water from your like no streams or your bore well. Okay, so last three decades, if you see, you know, RA has become a very big concept uh, like, you know, uh, all over the world. It's uh, and, uh, now in India, what is more successful in this, uh, this with RA system is like a brood stock and nursery system. So it is very good uh, commercial activity for uh, nursery systems in particular, like brood stock management. And only ones who have done real good uh, experience, they do use uh, this in uh, production systems. But of course, in trout, um, you have to use only RA system is the way. Next one. So here, series of filters are used. Uh, so that's why this is also called zero water system because you don't depend on the external water during your culture, except for saying the leakages or the waste or whatever happens uh, from your operation or something. So the mechanical filters, they remove the physical, let's uh, say there are floating uh, feed components are there or the fecal matter from the growing animal. So that is removed by physical filters. And by biological filters, they are used to uh, you know, treat the you know, what is dissolved uh, nutrients in the water which are harmful for the fish like the nitrogen and all that. So that is converted by biological uh, you know, means by using uh, bacteria. Again, after all this uh, physical and biological filter, what we do is uh, what is uh, like you know, pass through UV and ozone treatments. So you want to like you know, be sure that you are giving good quality water to your growing animals and leave least uh, uh, chances for any like you know, infections to get in the system. So better when someone is doing a uh, like, you know, big commercial unit, it's better to have all the systems so that you are safeguarding your culture system. Next one. As I told you here, uh, the cost of RS is very high, so uh, capital intensive this is, so initial cost of RS is very high system, uh, very high. And again it's a complex system of culture and requires less than 10 percent of new water. As I told you only the leakages whatever happen uh, like now in your system, so that's all you have to take care of uh, to replenish the water in your culture tank and land again. So if you are targeting, let's say, in the traditional uh, tank, say 100 tons, so same thing you can do in just 5 to 10 percent of area. So that is the level of intensity, what is happening in the industry now. So same, uh, like, no quantity of 100 tons you can do in just 5 to 10 percent of the area. Next one. So this is just a brief, uh, you know, graphical, like, you know, what RS system basically has. So you can have multiple uh, grow tanks. Uh, so I have just shown here three. That there is a sump, so for water from the culture tanks, it goes in a underground sump, like no, by gravitation, it goes by gravitation, so sump, so what happens, whatever is the physical, uh, like no, floating uh, matter in that, waste matter, so that will slowly settle down, and then there is a, like no, um, uh, way for the water on the top level of the tank, so from top side it comes up, so all the uh, physical settlements happen at the bottom, and water overflows to the next uh, tank and it then goes to the mechanical filter so again whatever remains there so that goes the there are drums and you'll see some images i have and then from there mechanical filters drum filters it goes to uh, bio filters and then uh, once it is done so you can do again the uv treatments or whatever you have and then you reoxygenate water so there is again you do a uh, venturi system normally i have some images i'll just show you and so you enrich the water again with oxygen and then put that back in the growing tanks. Next one. So here you can see some of the, right now, uh, the filters what are used. So the first one on the left is the drum filter, what is used. So the middle image is also the same. And others are there, the sand filters, what we use rapid sand filters. Next one. 
this is the slide when we uh, you know uh, gather the like you know from uh, this filters mechanical filters this is the amount of sludge we can uh, uh, remove and again because it is nutrient rich it is protein it is nitrogen so it can be used as a uh, fertilizer for your agriculture crop so nothing goes waste these are uh, Again, the biological filters. When we, when I said the biological filters, so these are the different media what is used to grow your bacteria. So on the right top, you can see they are the like you know, they are plastic like you know basically uh, pieces. Okay, this uh, media uh, and the bottom left you can see so all the brownish. So that's what is like you know when it is almost one month, one and a half month in the uh, this uh, biological filter. So all that uh, bacteria grows in there, and that's what takes care of. Uh, the uh, biological waste are taken care of by that. So you can see the contrast between the clean white uh, the species and uh, the one on the left bottom. Next one. So these are like just go back. Yeah. So right bottom you can see they are the different designs. Like no basic uh, concept is to have maximum surface area. So there are some like no different scientists have designed different uh, types of uh, this beads. Yeah, next one. So this is one of the like you no know, huge uh, circular tank uh, project. So these circular tanks are the culture tanks. On the right hand side is a huge tank that is the settlement tanks, and uh, behind the image is the like you no know, all the other filtration system. So this is how the projects are. Next one. Yeah. So bio block. Little bit I will brief you. See this system basically started from uh, Israel. Uh, studied about him. Uh, um, so flocculation, you know, even in our water treatment, when we drink water in the water treatment plants, there is uh, flocculation after so there is alum is used to settle the uh, physical uh, matter, the dissolved matters. So same thing, something similar concept is here, uh, done in this bio system. So this flocks, uh, like now, when you give the uh, good amount of nutrition, what is desired by this, uh, for growth of this flock, so they are microscopic, then they slowly they collide with each other and they make larger this, uh, blocks. And then uh, same uh, this blocks that use up all the nitrogen waste from your in the culture tanks. And then that's how they you know they use up the nitrogen waste from, uh, from there. And this uh, and then you give also the beneficial bacteria in them. So they totally like, no, convert all the nitrogen, whatever is there, they convert it into useful form. And this indirectly becomes, those blocks become uh, nutrition for the animals, so they can also be used as a feed. So as I told you, it was originally concept work in Israel. Elie uh, uh, Benek, uh, you can just read about him. So he, he used this concept basically in the municipal system to clean the water. And then he was the one then who then use this concept in aquaculture. See, if you go to Israel, you know, uh, there is area, it's a total desert area, I'm not getting the name now. And 2005, I have seen there farming in desert. Almost per meter, they are taking 30, uh, 30 kilos, 40 kilos in 2005. So you can imagine the amount of technology Israel has. They are far ahead of the rest of the world. Like the Israel is, if you see, far ahead in terms of the technologies. So he used this principle to take care of the wastewater municipal waste, and then same uh, concept he adopted in the fish farming, and that's how it became popular. Biofuel became popular uh, in aquaculture uh, industry as well. He came to India also. Like he gave, I think, two three projects with consultancy in uh, India as well. Next one, please. So this is like our basic like you know, concept of the bioblock. What we uh, do uh, in bioblock. Uh, so it's a basically you have to maintain ratio between uh, nitrogen and uh, carbon. So that's a, like you no know, again. That's why I told you initially bioblock is you have to have very good knowledge of bioblock system if you want to enter this. Very uh, like you no know, uh, paying if you only pay attention to the technology part of it. You understand the science behind it. It's very good. Uh, very paying. Better than like the returns are more than RAS. <coughs> but only thing is, as I said, you have to be very good in this. You have to train yourself with someone for some maybe a crop or so. So as to understand like no, how to manage because it needs daily attention. Unlike your RAS, this needs daily attention. 
So to maintain those uh, ratios of uh, like you no know, starch uh, is added uh, to maintain the proper balance between nitrogen and carbon. You add starch. So starch can be any simple like you no know, molasses. So what we use, bagasse, starch, or cassava, jaggery, sugar cane, or rice. And so all the like you know, they are uh, very uh, cost effective materials which you can use uh, to maintain your carbon and uh, nitrogen balance in the system. Next one. So biofluid is a mix of algae, fecal matter, dead organisms and bacteria. So all everything is a mix. So nothing goes waste in that. So like no, we hardly relieve that water from the tank when we do the biofluid system because this is a mix of everything. So when we maintain that proper nitrogen carbon uh, uh, balance and uh, the beneficial bacteria, so it becomes a nutrition for the animals as well. Yeah, next one. So here, uh, you know, this is uh, the uh, study done. What are the nutrition values of a bioflock? So you can see protein depends on the amount of, like, you know, the type of uh, source of your nitrogen what you have. So protein can be between 12 to 49 percent. See commercial feeds when we use in, uh, like, you know, fish farming it's so like, you know, 40, 45 percent. Mushroom farming up to 36 percent you use. But see in flock we can have even up to 49 percent of uh, protein collected. Fat. 12.5%, carbohydrates 23-36%, fiber 8.5-16%, to 16 ash 13-46%. So very good nutritionally which can supplement your feed requirement of the growing animal. So this is how nutrition profile of a, a bioflock is. And again it's a good source of uh, vitamins, good source of minerals as well. Next one. So these are like you no know, flock if you can see. So everyone doing flock, so you will see all this frothy system, froth growing on the uh, uh, not top of the tank. So this is what is basically formation of the flock. And it needs continuous aeration, 24-7 the aeration it needs. You cannot afford to have like no breakdown of your aeration. So because you stop your aeration, all of the uh, this flock will collapse at the bottom. So you know you will have so much of carbon load, nitrogen load. And your animals, will, they will, you know, this dead flock will eat up the oxygen, whatever is in the tank, and nothing will be for the animals, and they will just die. No so intense, no, go back, yeah. So you can see the right top, uh, so intense oxygen supply, so that's called, you know, venturi system, what you see. So very intense oxygen supply is there. And on top also you can see, like, you know, the agitated uh, right bottom, so agitation, so much aggression is needed. And again, left bottom, you can see how intense, uh, you know, we have to have aggression in this system. Because you have to always keep the flock in suspension. You cannot afford to set, make it settle. So it has to be in suspension all through. Next one. Yeah, so these are different colors of the flock, what you can see. Initially, like you now, when you culture the tank, it will be green. So slowly, when your flock develops totally, so you will have this brown color water. Any bioflock system you see, if it is maintained good, so you will have, when you have brown water, you know it has been maintained very well. And these are the microscopic images of the flock. So you can see every rubbish is in this uh, bioflock. Everything, fecal matter, the dead uh, the, you know, animal parts, you'll have uh, feed, uh, the feed parts. Next one. So this is bioflock sampling, what we do, just uh, below the surface. So what is uh, that cone, uh, enough cone that is called. So it's a particular design cone uh, by the other manage. So this is used to check your quantity of uh, flock, what you need in your system. Okay, we always then try to have uh, 15 uh, ml and above flock in the system. So, you just you sink this uh, cone in the water. It has to be agitating, you know, water has to be always like you know, as if it is boiling. And you maintain in one level, uh, one liter level. Allow it to settle for 15-20 minutes. So, you can see the last image and uh, it has settled. So, top water is clean and bottom all that uh, flock is settled. Next one. So this is how, well, like, you know, flock you can see, uh, so different waters, uh, the reading of uh, flock in different waters after settling for 15-20 minutes. So clarified, uh, effluent if you see, so effluent you can see how clean the water is, culture tank and the discharge slash like you menu. In the <coughs> bioflock or RS system, there is a central drain. Uh, I don't know if you have any idea of that. So if, imagine this is your tank. So in this uh, modern aqua culture tank, what we do is in the center of the tank, we make a like you no know, outlet. So which will just come out under the bottom of your tank and come out. 
and that is because you try to circulate water in one of the direction and by centrifugal force all the mark all the rubbish will get collected in that uh, central uh, that's called uh, pit uh, or called central toilet different uh, areas whatever so if you try to discharge the water this is how the image will be of the flock so full one liter is full of flock next one yeah these are uh, typical tanks of uh, culture so you can see on the left, left image here there is some uh, you know piping on the top so that's what is by squaring your system so you don't leave any chances for any external uh, interference in the culture system so left one is green water you know it just started the culture and the right uh, tank is like no brownie that means full fledged wild flock in the system next Again, different types of uh, tanks for RAS as well as bioflock you can have. You can have like you know, uh, this round or rectangular with rounded corners, or you can have totally uh, like you know, concrete round tanks, or you can have tarpaulin because that's cost effective. It's always good to go for uh, such with this uh, tarpaulin tanks. Uh, you can use 500 to 750 micron um, this uh, plastic tarpaulin to make your tanks. Next one. Yeah, keep keep uh, clicking. So major operating cost, as I told you, feed. Uh, it's almost 60, 70 percent of your operation cost is uh, feed. And bioflock lowers that. Uh, like now, uh, <coughs> like now this one Ramesh in Punjab. <coughs> so his FCR was 0.9 in industrial farming. So that's what it can aid in your like now, feed uh, reduction. So if you are able to maintain good bioflock. So again, uh, works uh, against the harmful pathogens. Uh, they compete for the space. They compete for the nutrients. Like no, when you maintain a good bioflow, and they also act as the bio, the bacteria what you introduce. So they act as bioremediators. So they will neutralize the harmful uh, elements in your pond. And also because by mass they are more than the harmful bacteria, you are uh, uh, like no, increasing their uh, quantum. So that's how uh, they will also then uh, your uh, pathogenic bacteria will be lesser. And they also like now um, uh, this probiotics. If you have studied about them, so the gut microbes also get improved. So you have lesser chance of animal becoming sick. And when with the system, you are reducing the chance of pathogenic bacteria in your tank because you are giving the beneficial bacteria in the system. So you are uh, animals are less susceptible to infections or diseases. So you are not using much of antibiotics. So that's how it is good for uh, your uh, like, uh, exports as well. Yeah, next one. See, if you go uh, coastal Kerala these days, their Kerala government has a scheme wherein they are allowing every household coastal areas or anywhere where there is a water body, they can have one, two tanks. They are subsidizing almost 60%. So, Kerala government also has a scheme. So, you can see almost every household, even small household, they have a tank behind their house. So that's how they do bioflock every you can see the color of the water, totally brown, that is very good bioflock maintaining. Like people they work uh, like you no know, daytime they do their normal jobs and the home there may be the wife or somebody at the home. So they take care of like you no know, to see if current is there or whatever or feeding is done. So somebody at the home, the lady of the house, she will feed during the day and evening then again he will come and he will have a So this is how like you know, they are promoting uh, bioflock in uh, Kerala. Next one. Yeah, this is um, Calabria in one of the culture systems. Like you can see the intense level, like you know, how much of fish is there. Next. Again, this is shrimp grown in biopark system. Next one. Yes, that ends. Use uh, steroids, so it's better if you can maintain. If you have the liberty to maintain a big buffer, so maintain. As I said, by square, by square your area, so you still uh, you can still do it. So what one with cost of some small areas farm? See, that depends. Like now, what uh, we can talk to about that if you want. We can just get to him. We can just connect. I'll just help you in that work. Anything else? an elaborative and uh, resourceful uh, lecture to our participants. 
I really hope that uh, they have enjoyed this lecture a lot. Thank you, sir. Now we'll be having our third. Uh,